Hey everyone, how's it going? We're back watching the AC Mirage, the story so far, timeline, and how to master stealth. How to master stealth is a bit of a longer video. The uh, story so far is probably just going to be talking about Valhalla and what people missed if they didn't watch it. So that's going to be a little bit cool to see. I actually did not play the very final like mission story thing. Uh, that's like the after story. I forgot what it was called, but it came out um, like at the beginning of the year, but I never played that. Um, or I guess watched it. And then the How to Master Stealth it goes over tools, skill tree, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just different abilities and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get this started. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all of that. I'm gonna be trying to live stream Mirage whenever it comes out here in three days. I heard something about it coming out on the 4th at night, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But, um, at a minimum, I'll be trying to live stream that Thursday night on the 5th. So let's get started. Mirage is a fresh standalone story that you can play without having experienced any of the past titles. But if you want to jump in with more context, we've got you covered. The game takes place in 9th century Baghdad. You play as Basim, a cunning young street thief who finds himself embroiled in a conspiracy that eludes his understanding. With nowhere else to turn, he joins the Hidden Ones, the first official incarnation of the Assassin's Brotherhood. Okay, so my theory based on that is that there's going to be some sort of... Not necessarily in the shadows as much. It is a conspiracy, but I think that the uh, Order of the Ancients are going to be doing something towards Basim and towards regular people in Baghdad, and it's going to cause him to look towards the Brotherhood since they are the ones who are combating it, and he probably gets saved by them. Um, and it also is really cool, and it does make sense because obviously I play the games, but it's cool that you can jump in without having to know much about the previous games. There are some series where it builds off of it, but for the most part, you don't really need to know anything. But let's just continue. Formed by Bayek and Aya in Egypt in 49 BCE during the events of Assassin's Creed Origins. Mirage actually takes place nine centuries after the events of Assassin's Creed Origins, at a time when the Assassins are still known as the Hidden Ones, mm -hmm. and 338 years before the time of Altair and the events of the original Assassin's Creed game. Which is he crazy. He first met an older and more experienced Basim in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, when he followed the Raven Clan during the Viking invasion with motives of his own. Now, 12 years earlier, we are in Baghdad with a younger Basim fighting for the free will of the people and defending them from the tyranny of those who would seek to control them. But not everything is as it seems. There are more than dark deeds happening in the shadows of Baghdad to worry about. What does it all mean? All will be answered in Assassin's Creed Mirage. All right. That was pretty straightforward. Um, that's pretty much what I thought it would be. But uh, pretty cool just to show, you know, a little bit of what's going on and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, see, let me see. Okay, two hours ago and one day ago. But this one is going to be talking about the tools, the upgrading tools, skill tree, assassin's focus, and Kidu's eye, notoriety, social stealth. So this is all about stealth and the different tools you can use to do stuff. Are you ready to walk the path of shadows? Assassin's Creed Mirage is taking us back to the roots of the franchise with a focus or so on they stealth say. gameplay. Whether you're an assassin initiate or an experienced mentor of the Brotherhood, we've put together a few helpful tips to help you make the most of Basim's skills. Basim carries six tools that you can unlock and play with. These include the throwing knife, a light knife balanced for eliminating guards at short or mid distances, the Noisemaker, a small explosive that distracts and lures guards away to facilitate your infiltration. The Trap, a non-lethal proximity explosive capable of knocking down enemies and creating chaos. The Smoke Bomb, a truly iconic assassin tool, releasing a thick cloud of smoke that obscures. I heard that this is way too OP. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> watch it. You literally put down the Smoke Bomb and you could be in the middle of a fight and they just don't know what to do and you can just immediately assassinate them. I think that's going to be way too OP and it's probably going to be a tool that people that are going to speedrun this game are just going to abuse. Oak bomb, but, like, a watch truly this. iconic assassin tool. They stand up. They don't see you anything. You just Releasing take them a out. thick cloud of smoke that and obscures those guys. vision and useful whenever you want to eliminate multiple guards. I'm not really a fan of that. I think it should work. A little bit, but I think this is, is just way too OP. Or cut loose during a chase. And finally, the blow dart, 
a silent projectile used to put targets to sleep and stay your blade from the flesh of the innocents. Oh, and a torch, if you need a spark of light in the darkest of places. Combi there better not be a bunch of snakes in the tombs. Combining these will result in unique and unexpected scenarios. You will first receive the throwing knives during your training as a hidden one in the fortress of Alamut and unlock the rest later in Baghdad. Top tip! You can quickly use some of the tools by combining the LT button of your controller with the face buttons. During your playthrough, you will have the ability to upgrade each assassin tool and change their behaviour to better suit your playstyle. For example, if you need more time to assassinate your enemies, try upgrading the smoke bomb to tier 1 to increase the smoke's duration. So they make it even more OP. This increases the distance and the, the amount duration. of time. To upgrade a tool, visit one of the Banu Musa brothers at a... My only hope is that it's extremely hard to get more of them, like it requires a lot of resources or something. Hidden Ones Bureau. The service will cost you upgrade materials such as steel ingots, okay, upgrade leather, materials. and components, How do you get which more? you can get by Obviously exploring you craft the them, world or, or completing you can maybe contracts. Find them? You can also choose a different effect for your tool from the same tier. For okay, so you can only choose one of them. But still, it's it's still like, I mean, it's not as OP for that, but it, I mean, it's still from the videos. Free of charge. Top tip, if you wish to unlock all the tools as early as possible, first eliminate the first main target, and then you will be able to unlock the three extra tool capacity skills in the skill tree. Speaking of skill trees, as you climb the ranks of the Hidden Ones, completing main missions and contracts, you will learn new skills to help you become a master assassin. Trickster Phantom Predator. Phantom disappearing, trickster smokes and deceitfulness and like dropping coins I see. Predator just looks like the eagle usage, which is going to be not useless, but not that um, not that important, I would assume. Those looking to focus on stealth gameplay should look to unlock the following skills first. Extra t Dude, they're literally just telling you everything. I don't I don't really like this. I think you should figure it all out yourself. Full but... capacity to unlock all tools early in your journey. Chain assassination to eliminate two enemies swiftly. Pathfinder to have your eagle highlight more opportunities like faction ingredients, chests, or secret entrances. If you are not satisfied with the choices you've made, use the reset all skills option to try a different approach. However, keep in mind that extra tool capacity skills will not be reset. Top tip, if you want to maximize your skill points, contracts can be accepted on the contracts board within the Hidden Ones bureaus. The Assassin's Focus is a new way to eliminate targets in quick succession whilst remaining undetected. It allows you to- Not a fan of this. This is literally just like some Odyssey stuff. Um, they're like, it's an Animus glitch. They're, it's, they're literally making it easier for you. I don't care. It's not an Animus glitch. They designed this as a company. The Animus doesn't make stuff up. Ubisoft does. To slow down time, mark, and execute up to five enemies. You can use it to plan an attack carefully, navigate rapidly in the environment. Like, really? Or even use it. This is literally like the Spear Leonidas. It as an emergency kill if you're about to get spotted. There are countless ways to master it and create fun and breathtaking moments. But be careful where you land at the end of your strike, as you might end up getting detected if you are not Not cautious. a fan. To use this ability, first perform stealth kills to fill the focus bar. Each chunk of the focus bar allows you to assassinate one enemy within the assassin's focus. Once your focus power is charged, and you are out of conflict, trigger the assassin's focus by pressing the right joystick to execute a perfect sequence of assassinations. You can use the ability from any position, even when jumping. What? Enkidu, Basim's eagle companion, can offer you a wider view of your surroundings. Do this by pressing up to switch to Enkidu. 
Gear Chest Enigmas, Dervis's Artifacts, Historical Sites, Mysterious Shards, Tales of Baghdad. So I did see there's the Tales of Baghdad, which are hopefully going to be like the um, Tales of Greece or Lost Tales of Greece or whatever it is. Um, I think there were some Valhalla ones too, but I just remember the Odyssey ones more. Um, and then obviously you've got the 15 historical sites. So I hope there's a discovery tour. I just didn't know if they would do that since it's a smaller scale game. But I mean, I would assume since there's a bunch of historical site markers, um, which would be cool. In Kidu's eye view. This overhead view allows you to mark your enemies and to locate your objectives with greater precision. Be mindful ah, so that it enemy doesn't tell you, you everything at first because right here... These were grayed out until they Precision. highlighted them. Well, the one Be mindful right there, that but, enemy yeah. marksmen can shoot Enkidu, preventing the scout until you eliminate that guard. Committing illegal actions will attract the attention of the guards and raise your notoriety. The notoriety gauge is divided into several levels marked nice. with distinct icons. New dangers await when each of these thresholds is reached. The first level will have citizens recognizing you and exposing you to the guards. The second one <laughs> will see archers populating the roofs of Baghdad and being hostile to you and your every move. And finally, the third level will increase oh. the stakes by having the interceptor, an elite guard well. of Baghdad, sent after you. Decrease your notoriety by removing the wanted posters. Oh, that's in the sick! It doesn't just like tear it off. It literally just tears Baghdad it down the middle. That's cool. Dad, without being seen by the authorities, bribe a Munadi with a power token, or defeat the powerful interceptor. Being unknown to the city and its inhabitants will give you a strong advantage on your enemies. So make sure you keep an eye on your reputation. Hiding in plain sight. The second tenant of the Hidden yep. Ones is one Whoa. that Basim embraces in the streets Whoa. of Baghdad. Throughout your journey, crowds can help you stay hidden from the eyes of your enemies. That was too fast. Walking into a group of at least three civilians will let you blend in with them and help you avoid the gaze of guards. That's cool. Or so you can just like walk in line with escape. them a little bit. You can also bribe specific civilians Without using tokens to, be in a group. to distract guards or stay hidden within a moving group. A oh, practical plays music way and they to start infiltrate watching. locations of interest. That's messed up. You can use your environment to hide and strike without leaving a trace. You can also use hiding spots like yep. gazebos, cabinets, haystacks, and stalking zones, all of which will help you evade or get the jump on your enemies. Don't forget, whistling enemies by pressing right on the D-pad will lure them closer for a stealthy kill no matter where you hide. Becoming a master assassin is no easy task, but we hope these tips are helpful in getting you started on your journey to defeating the Order that other of dude just stood still. And Hold in up. the Hold on, you sorry. Start this dude just stands still. Watch. Started on your journey to defeating the Order <laughs> of the Ancients. And in the words of Roshan, remember, from this day forward, you are a hidden one. Yeah, you know what Roshan's voice sounds like? My bad, that might have been way too loud. <laughs> well, it did look pretty good. Um, There are some problems I have, like Assassin's Focus, how you can just take out 15,000 dudes at one point and they just stand there. Um, Another problem I have is, what was it? Um, I forgot... Um, what was it? The smoke bombs. Yes, duh. The smoke bombs and in Kidu's eye, you literally just pop those down. Everybody's dead. Like, it's so easy. I saw footage from some of the content creators that were able to play the game early, and they literally were in the middle of a fight, and they just popped it and then took out the main target. Like, it's just stupid. So, anyways, um, I thought it was pretty decent, though. It's a really good introduction at seeing what is going to be in the game in terms of stealth, and it helps you get used to it. I think there's a little bit too much information they provide. I think you should learn that on your own. Obviously, you don't have to watch this video, but Ubisoft themselves posted it. But, um, yeah, it looks overall pretty good. I'm excited for it. Um, like I said, it's coming out on the 5th, potentially the 4th. I don't know, but it should probably just be the 5th. 
So um, with that said, thank you all for watching, and I will try to live stream that here in a few days on Thursday, so keep a lookout on that. I will set the live stream at least an hour or a few hours beforehand, and uh, I'll see you all later.